Hey there, it's Kimmy here with another episode of Hooray for Lingerie on Hooray Kimmy TV. The other day I had the pleasure of sitting down for a Google Hangout with Gina Cadlick, the founder of Blue Stockings Boutique. Keep watching to find out why this alternative boutique's motto is under things for everyone and how you can help them get started and what makes Gina say Hooray for Lingerie right here on Hooray Kimmy TV. So thank you so much for being here, or I guess being where you are and hanging out <laughs> with me in Google today. Um, I'm really excited to have you. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here in my house, but with you. <laughs> right. Um, so I just want to dive right in. Um, I've done a little bit of research on Blue Stockings Boutique, but tell me in your own words, what is Blue Stockings Boutique? So Blue Stockings isn't going to be an online um, alternative lingerie boutique, and our motto basically is under things for everyone, which really means everyone, um, but pretty much anybody who's um, ever felt marginalized in any way, and the goal just being to offer people experiences that really reflect um, their bodies, their identities, and their lives. I love that. In fact, you actually said that right here. I love it. We aim to be a safe, inclusive space where people can see their bodies, their identities, and their lives represented in their under things. Mm -hmm. That is like an awesome way to describe what you're doing. Thank you. And when do you plan on opening? March 2015 um, is the launch date that we're that we're aiming for. It'll be a soft launch, um, a pretty small inventory compared to what we're eventually aiming for. Um, the hard launch is set for June, which will also be Pride Month. So, hey, that's a great way to include it all together. I love that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you said that you're aiming for March. Um, I know that you have a campaign coming up or, or going on right now. Sorry. Yeah. Um, how can we get involved? How can we help Blue Stockings come to fruition? Excellent. Um, so right now we've got eight days left in the campaign. Um, so it ends December 20th. We have $400 left uh, to raise. Our target is $2,500, um, but $400 left um, and any extra obviously is always welcome. Um, the money that's being raised in the campaign will go towards inventory and largely also towards paying our web developer who is a very dear friend of mine who has been just absolutely wonderful about getting the web site up and has been doing it out of the goodness of her heart, um, but I believe really strongly in paying people for their expertise and actually paying her what she's worth. And so um, good web developers are uh, are hard to come by these days, I think, for uh, for that cost. So Yeah, that's true. Well, that's amazing that you're only $400 away yeah. at the time of this interview. Give it a couple yeah. more days, right? So you might be blessed by the time that this goes live, but that's phenomenal. Congratulations. Thank and you. Where can someone go to donate to this campaign? The campaign is on Tilt, um, and it's entitled Help Blue Stockings Launch. We also have a link on our main webpage, bluestockingsboutique.com. Perfect. And I will be sure, if you visit hoorayakimay.com, to have a link there as well in uh, the body of this interview. So for sure awesome. you can go there. Um, so we talked about a little bit about marginalized people, right? So who, who is this for? Who is your target audience? Who, who are you trying to, um, to help with their under things? Yeah, so I mean, I would say anyone who has felt, um, who has walked into a boutique before and just felt like there isn't anything for them, uh, for them in that space, whether or not that's necessarily true, um, but just who has who has felt that way. My, I have a special heart for the LGBTQ community. Obviously, like I identify with that community. That's really, I mean, that's where you know my my passion is. But I've had so many just straight cis women tell me that they are so excited about this idea, um, whether it's because they wear a really petite size or they're plus size. They just they have trouble finding things that really fit them. Um, I think in some ways, um, just the and, and this isn't a, a lingerie specific problem. I think just a problem with the larger society in general, fashion, gender norms, etc. But they feel like um, just their sexuality is straight sexuality is just controlled and constructed in um, in a way that just doesn't fit what they personally feel. Um, and so, just tr trying to create a, a space that's really inclusive. And we talked a little bit about this before because you were actually kind enough to interview me for your blog mm -hmm. um, about how, because I, I started my lingerie um, sales experience here in New York City, yeah. that it's a little bit more open here, but there's a yeah. wide range of people throughout the country and the world that don't necessarily feel that safe place to go shopping. And so because you're online, I feel like it's you're at a really great advantage to be able to help a lot of people across the country. Yeah, I had initially envisioned brick, uh, Blue Stockings as a brick and mortar boutique, um, precisely for what you're saying, like having a physical space that's a safe space to go to, um, but just online. Um, my friends who <laughs> live not in Boston are very excited about being able to um, to go online. So yeah, 
Definitely. So this, we talked about just a little bit, but you, I, I want to know specifically why you feel like these people need help. And I, w I want to read a quote that you said here. You said, all it takes is a bunch of people starting to do a better job and have a conversation. Yeah. Police stockings is a drop in the bucket that will hopefully have a ripple effect. What kind of a ripple effect do you want to create? I'm hoping... So let me use blue stockings by way of being an example um, of one type of example, I guess. Um, like this is a queer boat going to be a very feminist, explicit, like using very feminist, explicit language, um, queer, explicit language, very inclusive language. Um, and I've had so many people say, like, how does a place like this not exist yet? Like, um, I don't think it's, and the support has been tremendous. And I think that. Um, just it, but I don't want blue stockings to be the only place like this that exists. I want other people to start who already have boutiques to start using more inclusive language to reconsider what we say when we call a bra nude. Like, are we talking about a nude or are we talking about white women nude? Like, how many nudes yeah. are we, you know, are we discussing here as a shade? Um, like, how are we considering our language? Like, I think that that's the kind of ripple effect I'm talking about in terms of the language that's used, just creating safer spaces in general. Um, so, like, you know, Nubian skin that just came out right like they are one of many brands that, has, that you like you've noted has have done you know shades for women of color um, but it's not enough to have one or two brands on the market at any time that are doing that like we need we need multiplicities of representation and I don't think that having one like great store that's doing something is enough um, and I think that oftentimes we as a society just settle for having one or two things like oh great they're covered like the queer people have a boutique awesome you know <laughs> black, you know the black women have a brand okay they're done like no, we need more than that. Um, so that's what I'm that's what I'm getting at. Um, I think what you just said is so important. I don't think like you like you said, like, oh, they're covered. They've got it already. Like what? That's not fair. And it's actually a very um selfless thing for you as a business owner to do, but at the same time, it's still gonna support your business. So I'm thrilled. That was like a phenomenal answer. Bravo. <laughs> Hooray for that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Speaking of hooray, um, I want to know a little bit about your own lingerie story and what makes you say hooray for lingerie. Yeah, so I came to lingerie, I think um, there are two, kind of two points at which I came to this. Um, on the one hand, I was one of those girls who developed, I, I'm a full bus size, um, and I came to lingerie on the one hand early in life because my mom started taking me to Victoria's Secret um, as a pretty young girl because that was what fit me. Um, you know, I grew out of you know, training bras pretty early, so it was like, well, Victoria's Secret, there you go, yeah. um, which I think many people did, um, hence why they're now marketing to, you know, our age group and not necessarily our mother's age group right. um, and such. Um, but at any rate, so that was my first kind of really positive introduction to, hey, this is a place that I can go, and, and at the time I felt really safe there. Um, there weren't ever a lot of men at the ones that we went to. Like, it was just like, hey, here you can have something that fits, and it looks pretty, and I was, you know, 13, 14, and I was like, thank goodness. Like, it, you know, it just it felt really great to have that. Um, but I've kind of dwindled on the lingerie after that, like, you know, that initial you know, hooray experience, um, and just kind of settled into a very utilitarian um, space with it for kind of the duration of my adolescence and early, um, I guess, adulthood. Um, but then kind of came to it later um, when I was coming out, actually. And so lingerie played a really big part in kind of discovering my sexuality. And when I wasn't always ready to be experimenting or um, or whatnot with my actual external clothing that I was presenting to the world, um, mm -hmm. lingerie was a really safe space to do that. And um, I just I feel really strongly that what you're wearing underneath it all, as you would say, um, it, it just has such a powerful effect on how you present yourself and how you feel about yourself. Um, and it just, it's so much room for experimentation and just for identity. I mean, I know so many women who may present in a variety of ways, but like what you wear underneath doesn't necessarily have to correspond to what's externally presented. Like you could be wearing something super feminine or you could be wearing like boxer briefs and a more compression type bra. Like you can wear anything and just yeah. as long as it's comfortable to you. So it was a really safe space for me to really experiment and actually also start finally wearing bras that fit. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so that was also a huge deal. And that was just a few years ago. Um, so it's been quite a journey in the last, you know, maybe three or four years. Um, I have so much to say to what you just said. <laughs> 
was what you just ended with about how like you just kind of came into the world of being in the right bra size uh, recently. Yeah. Um, bravo to you because I've helped a lot of women who get their first bra fitting when they're like 50. And the reason for that is a couple reasons. One, uh, most of the time they've kind of been able to fake it for a while through yeah. the through the years, um, and by the time they're 50, usually their kids are out of school, and they're kind of like, okay, I have this time and this money to devote to myself finally, and they're desperate because their breasts have changed so much, or the breast tissue's gotten so soft that they just can't kind of like handle it anymore, and they're just yeah. so desperate. So yeah. good for you for doing it now. Um, but also, when you talk about like your underneath and how you can sort of um, experiment with what you're wearing underneath without having to fully present it to somebody. Yeah. I I used I still do this when I'm having like kind of a, a buttoned up day or I have to wear something really strict, um, which I don't necessarily do often anymore. Um, I went nuts underneath. I really like oh, yeah. and lace and whatever else. And oh, if yeah. someone looked me in the eye, I knew I'm wearing something gorgeous <laughs> right now and you need to get yes. <laughs> that, no, that that totally um that totally makes sense. Um and I actually do the exact same thing. I mean, I'm a graduate student right now, and so I teach. And so I, I like, as a teacher, I mean, I in a university setting, you have some leeway, right? It's not like I'm teaching preschoolers, um, but I definitely don't dress. You know, I, you can't get away with the kind of cleavage that you could maybe sure, yeah. as a self-employed. So, so yeah, I totally hear you. Like just going crazy underneath because you know you have to dress a little more conservatively in the workforce. I love doing that too. <laughs> like. Yeah, and then I also talk a lot about actually almost the opposite of what we're saying, which is aligning your inside, your outside, and your underneath together. And I actually, like I said, I used to dress very severely on the outside because I was, I wanted to be taken seriously, and I was working in very professional, mm. kind of serious places. Um, yeah. And I was sort of afraid to let them see my inside because I, I was, I felt like I was too quirky or too silly or too nerdy or too girly or too whatever or not enough of something. Yeah. Um, so I had to kind of do some inner work to then get right with who I am mm -hmm. and not be afraid to let that show on the outside. So yes, I wear you know silly glasses and bright colors and yeah. funky patterns and cat ear whatever. Um, and I think I've had to, it's taken me a journey to do that. But for sure, you can start experimenting or um, shining, I guess, yeah. um, from the underneath for sure yeah. to start. Love it. Yeah. Love. Yeah, it's just it's safe, and I don't I don't think that it's regarded as a but I don't think it's regarded as the kind of investment, unfortunately, that other parts of the wardrobe are, um, which is so which I would like to <laughs> obviously like I'm getting into business in this like I would also like to help change um, because it's just I mean it's just as serious an investment as other parts of your clothing um, like making sure everything's supported is really important like so anyway yeah. No, you are talking to the choir. Like, <laughs> I totally, totally think that undergarments are the best investment. In fact, oh. when I um, started working for some of those really professional places, I was broke. And um, I could have invested in, like, a really, really expensive wardrobe, and I just didn't have the, the funds for it. Yeah. So I invested in a really good undergarment and some really basic pieces from, like, H&M. Yeah. Um, to put over my really good undergarments. And because I had the right undergarments and the right attitude and I felt really comfortable and confident, I looked like I was wearing a much more expensive professional wardrobe. So I always tell girls that just because other people can't see it or um, just because you feel like it's um, it's hidden from the world, like don't underestimate how important it is to invest in really yeah. good quality undergarments. Absolutely. It makes all the difference in how an outfit looks, just all the difference. Yeah. Total, just seconded, right. preach, like, just, <laughs> just go, yeah. So, so we talked about how much you like laundry, great. So then I have to ask you, song or brief? Briefs, I, but all kinds of briefs. I really love lacy briefs, and I really love super comfy boxer briefs. Like, I could live in them. They just, they're wonderful. <laughs> My poor roommates, I walk around and I'm like, they're, they're just, they're horrified, but that's okay. <laughs> Hey, I do the same thing. Like I, I think it's really I have I wear both just so everybody else knows too. Yeah. Um, but I have to ask that question because it's always like a because we have a full chance to share some of your underneath experience. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely. So this is kind of an unrelated question, but something that you and I um have in common that we both really like social media, and that's yeah. actually how you and I met. Um, yeah. So tell me just a little bit about how social media or blogs, um, your own or other people's, has really helped your business so far. 
So I think that it's been it's been just tremendous in terms of connect, really connecting with people like you. Um, and I remember um, really once I got the idea for Blue Stockings, I pretty much immediately um, went about getting the name for the WordPress blog and get, um, joining Twitter. And immediately I remember being like, wait, should I have done this? Was this a huge mistake? Because I started following people and connecting with people who were in the industry. And I was like, wait, shit, am I going to be taken seriously? Am I... <laughs> Am I just going to seem like a big poser? Are they going to actually see like the the credit in this idea? Um, but just that was so so critical to gathering momentum and really to holding myself accountable to the business in general. Um, and it led me to connect really quickly, I think, and much more quickly than I would have otherwise with people like you, um, like various brands and designers, um, because of social media and because I've established a pretty decent presence so far. Not and just a number of brands and designers have reached out to me, wanting to connect with Blue stockings which is tremendous and so and so wonderful I'm thrilled about that um, and that definitely wouldn't have happened were it not for the that kind of engagement um, so it's been wonderful and obviously like even getting into lingerie like um, you know the two blogs that were the most um, essential to kind of my journey were definitely I mean the lingerie addict obviously but also the lingerie lesbian was uh, yeah. just, I mean for obvious reasons but was right. huge for me like with reading that um, and those are really the two I read most often um, in my own journey over the last few years. So so it's been, I don't know what I would have done without it, definitely. Um, it's been fabulous. That's awesome. That's like a, a true testament to what social media can do for your business, which oh, I'm, God, yeah. I'm, big, I'm a big believer in. Yeah. Um, so congratulations on taking that leap, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, so last question. Yeah. What are your favorite lingerie brands? I mean, you do a lot of research. I know you're carrying a lot of different brands, and you said you're going to have a soft launch first, and then you'll dive deeper into um, bigger inventory. But what are your personal like, favorite favorite brands that you like to wear or that you're excited to uh, carry? Um, that I'm. So I'll answer with the ones that I'm excited to wear, and I'll answer with... Um, some brands that I'm very recently excited about too, because I have like my everyday favorites that are like years old, but also that like also everyone wears to an extent. <laughs> so, sure. um, so, so some that are that are recent favorites would be Playout. Um, their boxer briefs are so ridiculously comfortable. They're so soft. Um, so I am in love with them. And then I also am really, really like on the other end of the spectrum completely. I'm loving Blackbird underpinnings, um, which is they have like that super retro 1920s vintage feel. And yeah. it's weird because like I can never wear bralettes just because of the full bust. Like just I, bralettes do not work for me. But theirs like does, and it's silk and it's gorgeous. And so yeah, really loving their stuff right now. That's awesome. And yeah. are there any um, specific brands that you know you're going to carry? I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. Any brands that you know you want to or are going to carry um, in, the, in the online boutique? Yeah, I've got. Well, I won't. I won't list the brands. They. I mean, I'm. I'm not comfortable listing the brands at the moment. But I've got over a dozen that are for sure signed on with agreements right now. So. Okay. Well, that's it's exciting. Very, very, very exciting. You. Yeah. I won't press you. Yeah. I'm just excited for you as well. Yeah. Oh, it's it's. I'm I'm thrilled. So yeah, it's it's going really well. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Gina, thank you so much for for uh, taking the time out of your day to do this, and best of luck um, in everything that you're doing with Blue Stockings Boutique. Thank you so much, Kim. Hey, thanks so much for watching this episode of Hooray for Lingerie on Hooray Kamei TV. To find out more information, you can visit bluestockingsboutique.com. And don't forget to tweet at me and tell me what makes you say hooray. Until next time, have a great day.